Welcome back guys, Automotive Inc. It is cold out here today in Colorado, but as I told you guys before, I want to make a video. So this is one of my big frustrations here. We got a $90,000, I mean in essence like 89 some change, a $90,000 truck doesn't have LED bed lighting, but if you go with the Chevy, uh, they put it in almost every trim at custom and above. Um, especially just the way they're 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 ordering those. I guess you could omit it somehow. But uh, Ram is really unique in the sense they don't even give you pre-wiring under the bed to put this thing in. So you're kind of just screwed. I mean, you have to come up with an idea. So I the other day came up with one of the ways I've done this before in other you know trucks. I didn't want to mess with it. Um, I'll put a link in the description for the cheapest way to do LED bed lighting. And that is something that you guys could check out. Like I said, that one's under 30 bucks. But this is a, you know, 24 Ram 3500 Laramie. So we're going to make it sexy. But here's what they get. So if you buy the kit from Ram, you're going to get a lot of zip ties and connectors, the lights themselves. And you get like 70 feet of freaking wire. Why? reason is guys is because they want you to run this thing all the way to the front of the truck up through the firewall do all of this stuff put it in the fuse box put your own little connectors on there and no i'm not going to do that now ford guys if you go the cheap route you're going to use hook and loop on my hook on my cheap video to do that because your bed's aluminum however guys i will also put a link in this video because Ford gives you prepped wiring underneath. So you can actually buy a kit, and I don't even remember who it is. I'm going to have to look it up, and I'll put that down below. But it's a plug-and-play thing, guys, so I appreciate Ford doing that. Chevy, good job for putting it in almost all your trucks anyway and at least giving us some pre-prepped wiring. Ram, hmm, kind of disappointed there. So what we're going to do is, is I'm going to do it the easy way. I bought this kit. This is the same as the Ram one. This one is... Uh, like $48 on the Zon. Again, everything will be linked below in this video. You go down and get all of it. So in the kit, it's gonna give you the 85 feet of wiring, some directions, which we're for the most part not going to use. The actual lights themselves, zip ties, which you won't use any of those. So you can put that in your favorite bag of tricks in your garage. And then I have an LED light here. All right, so simple to wire this, already came with all the connectors for it too this is a marine grade lamp switch meaning it will be semi resistant to weather but it's in a bed so we're not going to worry about that too much because I have the cover on it I will always have a cover however if you don't allegedly this is water resistant not waterproof so I've said that before when it says it's resistant or stains less does not mean it can't damage it if you sat there and sprayed it with water maybe potentially but it's so cool about this one it, it does have a little led lamp on it so when it's illuminated it'll it'll actually be on and that way you'll know it's on obviously the lights will be on the only caveat to doing it this way guys is you won't have to you won't have the ability necessarily to turn the cargo lamp on so if you have a tonneau your big third brake light right up there that is going to be basically not very useful unless you have your tonneau rolled up or flipped all the way up because it doesn't illuminate but if you don't want to undo this because you have your stuff in here guys um, the way I'm going to do this is you're going to have the ability to just turn the switch on back here you only have to fiddle fart with the one on the cab again that one will be on uh, if you just recently opened or shut the door but it won't be illuminating in here so to get the finished OEM look and give us a switch that's accessible right here where the switch would normally be I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right guys, so I'm putting my switch right here because I had this sprayed afterwards, but even if it comes from the factory with it, make sure you cut around the edge carefully. Try not to overscore it like you can see on mine. I kind of slid off here. It didn't go down into the bed liner. But the reason why you want to do this is because when we start prying it, you don't want this to be a weak edge right here and have it peel that up, okay? Most of this will be covered by the light anyway, but then it kind of defeats the purpose and it kind of put, leaves you a blemish for water intrusion later or something like that. So once you get that cut, we'll pry this piece off. All right, so now we got that off, guys. I wanna reuse this. I'm gonna mount the switch inside of this. Why? Because it's a good cover. But to do it, you're going to need a Dremel or a multi-tool to do that. So I'll get this cleaned up and get it cut out and marked. Don't necessarily need to see how that happens because all you're going to do is draw an outline of the switch on here Dremel it out and then we're going to reuse it. If you choose not to do that and you want, 
you can put like any style switch that has an on and off that's a 12 volt so if you just want to use one of the round toggles you can just drill that out and screw it in there that way again you don't have to go sophisticated but i think the switch that i chose is going to look really really good all right guys so you can see right here it took me a little bit just to kind of cut this out with the dremel again if you don't care how sexy it looks then you can just drill a hole down the middle of it and just use an on and off cheap tip toggle on there. I think this is gonna look nice. It's gonna give it kind of that uh, completed look, if you will. All right, as I've told you guys before, if your garage doesn't have a uh, wire tester, then get one, just a cheap LED light tester in there. Um, I'm gonna be piping the power off of the, the seven pin here. Um, again, there's usually a constant in there um, and you just have to dig around until you find it. So let's get this in here like this. And it should be this guy right here. So you can see the lights illuminated right here. So we're going to take this one off. Now this one does have a little cheat um, diagram on here showing you that this is the positive. Again, ground wise, um, it may show you which one's the ground. You can use any ground on the bed if you'd like. I would try and traditionally use the ground that's on this also. Reason being is, is because then you don't have any you know, grounds that are not grounded as well as the others. So I'll get a Torx. We're gonna pop this off. You can see our wiring doesn't have to go too short here. Now the one on the pasture side, we are gonna have to use that small lead of wiring to get that across the bed itself um, and a couple of those zip ties. But again, it's going to be fairly um, plain and simple once we get that going. All right, everybody. So you're gonna have these clips. You're gonna need to find which light goes to this right side so obviously the one that has the Y and the extra the extra wiring that's gonna be the one that goes up front again we're not gonna use this whole mumbo jumbo the spider web of things so we found this one it does have the frame clips and luckily Ram does give us the uh, the clip holes down there to plug those in so all we got to do is just take these out and then remember the orientation of the light guys when it goes in um, you'll find out real quick that this little peg is going to line up with this little groove right here so you really can't screw this part up and make sure you have the right one once you unplug them it doesn't matter they'll both plug into both sides but these are plastic even on the OEM ones so these are one shot do not over tighten or they will uh, they'll break so just get them snug and, and call it good it should be a quarter um, or like a seven mil but uh, yeah, it looks like it'll fit into there, so it should be a quarter. So we're gonna get this one ran down and put the wiring down towards the uh, outside of the fender there and uh, take a gander. All right, guys, so once we get this up here, make sure you push the, uh, the push-pull connector, disconnect it from the actual light. You get enough cable and wire that's gonna drop down here and you can kind of see it through this hole dangling down. If it gets bound up in here, before you put the things in there, kind of pull it out, put it back in so it falls down evenly, and then we'll get underneath the truck here in a second. So then you're just going to push these plastic connectors with the actual uh, screw on there. It's only going to go basically one way because you can see it is a rectangle. So you'll put it in there, and then again, do not over tighten, guys. All right, so as long as you don't over tighten, it's nice. It fits in there. Look how good that looks, guys. Again, this is the same as the OEM kit. We're just taking out one of the steps. I didn't want to touch on this. I'm going to put it on a constant, which means if you leave this turned on, potentially uh, you could eventually drain your battery. So what you can do is you can turn on the key uh, to the on or run or and find out which one of these is an accessory. Um, not necessarily actuated by the lights, but find out which one is going to be that one. So that way, if you want it to turn on, but then keep in mind, you'll have to have the key on to run those lamps. For me, it's gonna be easier to have that like that. Now, so Ram does give us holes and the clips are here and you can reuse the OEM holes for that. And right there, that's just gonna hold the wiring where it would normally be. So now if you had the pre-prepped wiring, there would be a plug under here, there is not. So now what we're going to do is basically cut this wire off and then there's a good chunk of, of wire here you guys can say for yourself with uh, you know this semi water resistant shroud um, we're gonna clip it off because we're gonna go right here to the back of the box all right so you might be saying well if I don't have a fifth wheel how's this gonna work on the 1500 ram guys you have this same connection on the back of the truck 
uh, I don't know too many trucks that won't have a seven pin and a four flat back there. Any of those will have that constant and the ground. So right here, I pop this loose. We can see my red is my power here. And then white is my ground or neutral. So you can skin this cat a million different ways, guys. You can use those clip on um, inline connectors. I don't like them because they suck. Uh, so I'm going to splice wire in here and I'm going to solder it and then wrap it back up. But if you guys don't have a wire in, or sorry, a wire hanger in your garage or a fish wire, this is how we're gonna get this up to these holes. And then I'll wire the switch. So for ease guys, I went ahead and disconnected this so I could pull back some of the shrouding. Again, I'm gonna have to retape this back by, uh, bad boy back on there here in a minute. That way I can solder it. I ran my lead wires, which is just a ground and a positive around through the hole here. You can. Depending on how stiff your, your wire is, you can put it through there. Um, the kit comes with plenty of wire. You can use all of this extra wire without having to buy it. So I got it around here. I'm going to clean these off and then I'm going to solder it in to these two right here. And then these will actually be connectors to match up with the connectors that came with the switch. So we'll have some male female plug in types and everything like that. The instructions for the switch are with the box. And inside of there, it'll tell you if you want the, the light. LED lights down all the time so if you had troubles finding it at night you can have that illuminated depending on how you're going to do it accessory power or whatever this will always be constant so if I had that on that LED would always be on so I'm not going to wire it that way but it does give you two different options so we're going to get this cleaned off I'm going to get it soldered in and then we'll be good to go with the rest of the switch and then bringing the wire up from the bottom of the box all right guys so I got that soldered in and then I have electrical tape here to cover up that connection and then we're gonna get this tape back on and get that in keep in mind make sure you keep your leads out here from falling down so just keep those you know accessible there um, <clears throat> but we can get this all wired up and leave this undone just in case you know you wanted to check everything before you to button it up but for us we'll just get it cleaned up we'll get some uh, Spade connectors is attached here in just a second and get this reconnected. All right, so for now I got this pushed back in, don't have any bolts in it. I got my uh, my bailing wire here, ran that down to fish that up through the frame. <clears throat> in the kit, your brown is going to be your power and your black is your ground versus up here, you can see that the ground or neutral was white and then the positive here, that's okay. <clears throat> so now we'll get the uh, the rest of this soldered up and put together. All right guys, so now we are going to connect our little um, solderless heat shrink um, spades to it so they can hook into the wiring itself. So we'll get that attached. There'll be no soldering here. And just remember, again, all of this extra wire that we need is in the kit. All right guys, I will put a link to this kit off the Zon. I mean, this is a great uh, heat shrink kit. Keeping in mind, you cannot use your typical um, you know clip you're gonna need this tool right here um, to make sure that you're using the right crimping tool for the connectors because you don't want to jack them up and then you can get a this is a Wagner heat gun just keep in mind when you set that thing down it should be hot but we got everything uh, shrunk up here and everything uh, keeping in mind again the switch is going to come with instructions you're going to need to connect the ground off of the actual lights themselves to the ground we brought over from here. And then this will walk you through the rest of the way. Now I'm going to tape around the backside of these. I just want to show you that when you heat those up, um, how nice they'll look. You shouldn't have to wrap them with, with uh, um, electrical tape, but I always cover every connection. And then I'll clip off this, clean it up, and then we'll get it hooked in. Now you might be wondering where is the wiring for this you don't see it remember once we have this connected it'll be like as if we ran it to the front of the truck then we'll actually plug it in down below all right guys so we got it buttoned up we got everything plugged in here we got it cleaned up the last thing once we get all this fed in and put in is obviously it tested to work keeping in mind guys if you want to add more led light strips this would be the time right here to solder everything together and get it on these are ample enough to supply the light. So let's get this buttoned up and see if she works. All right, guys, there it is installed, looking good. And, oh, 
we got power. So it has one LED that shines towards the middle of the bed and the LEDs that shine forward. So we will come back and see how she looks here in a minute once we get it all cleaned up and stuff. The other thing would be underneath the truck, we're going to need to find a place to uh, to put the zip ties up around parts and whatnot. Um, but again, it's just a nice finished product that lights up when it's on and we are golden. All right, guys, so they gave you plenty of zip ties. You can go underneath there and get that zip tied up to wherever. There's no really rhyme or reason to where that is. I mean, most stuff underneath there is held on by a clip on each side and zip tied together. Uh, I would recommend getting yourself a nice set of clear glasses for climbing under anything that's ever been driven down the road because getting dirt and shrapnel in your eyes sucks. Anyway, let's take a look. So again, we got a nice, good, finished product, guys. Again, if you're ordering a truck, order this from the factory. This will be a good, I think it's like 150 bucks, 200 bucks, it's worth your money. Um, one thing's for sure is not only is it worth the money, but it's going to add value to the truck, guys. If you're going to put a tonneau in it, I mean, you, you can just never have enough light at night. Now, this install, you're going to need a soldering iron. You're going to need um, those crimping tools. But, I mean, I'll put all, uh, all of that stuff in the description. You can head over and take a link. Literally, for the cost of the kit, all those extra tools, which you'll be able to use later on and for other projects, less than 100 bucks. Um, and you don't have to run the wiring all the way up to the front. You don't have to do anything like that. Again, if you want to use accessory power, you can wire the switch back here to be accessory power. That means the truck needs to be on or the key needs to be on an accessory. That's why I went direct. And the truck does have a retained accessory power, so it should shut off after something is left on long enough to, to start the truck. But you're, just, you're going to have to be cognizant of that. And, and again, guys, like I said, this thing... Um, Really, what with filming and everything, probably took me about a half hour. If you're a novice, new to everything, you, it might take you an hour. But running underneath the frame and having to go up and do it through the firewall and take the dash apart to hook it here and there, I don't find value in that. And uh, for most people, that's gonna be a little intimidating. So most people just do without. So if you want to do it the cheap way, you can. If you want to do it the uh, this way, you can. And you won't be able to see much difference in the lighting right now. You can kind of see it when it goes off. But it's going to be huge value to it, guys. And um, you just don't want to, just don't be afraid to do stuff like this. I mean, it's it's it was fun to turn the wrench on the truck, get it in there. It looks perfect, looks great, it works fine. Um, and I'm really excited about it, guys. I appreciate you guys being here. If you look down there in the corner again, smash the subscribe for me. Give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the install, you can feel free to reach out to me. I will get back to you. But if you follow those steps and read the instructions on the switches that you do, you can use a simple switch. You can do all that. All the tools, everything you're going to need will be in the in the link uh, description below. So just check all of that out, guys. And again, we'll see you on the next one.